Hi, Senator Scott Jensen. A few years back, I wrote a book called Relationship Matters. I'm a family doctor. I gotta tell you, when it comes to good healthcare, relationship matters. We can do all the testing we want, but if we don't have a good relationship with the patient, we are not gonna optimize the care that we give the patient. So when I talk about relationships, and I look at why people are confused about why haven't the Senate and the House taken away the emergency powers from Governor Walz, let me show you something. This is the structure that we go through in terms of, is my voice as a senator being heard in terms of the emergency powers piece? It starts with Governor Walz. But the next checkpoint is the Supreme Court. My voice isn't heard there. The next checkpoint is the Minnesota courts, the district courts. My voice isn't heard there. The next checkpoint is the executive committee with Attorney General Keith Ellison, Secretary of State Simon, Secretary, uh, Auditor uh, Blaha, Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. Finally, we get to the House and the Senate. And the way the legislation is written is the only way we can stop the emergency powers from being renewed for 30 more days is both of these have to say no. If either one says yes or doesn't say anything, the powers go forward 30 days. Well, the House is Democrat, and every time they've said, yes, the governor gets to keep his powers. The Senate's saying, no, we don't think you should keep them. It doesn't matter. We speak alone. And in that group, I'm one of 67 senators. That's why my voice doesn't get heard much. So when I look at this, I feel like we're looking at an abusive relationship. In a sense, Governor Walls is telling the legislature what we're going to get to do, who we're going to get to do it with. He does the same thing with Minnesotans. He's telling you who you can hang out with, where you can go, what businesses can open. And this isn't based on science. This is based frequently on negotiation. I know for a fact that Governor Walls, in his office or on Zoom conversations, has negotiated with various industry sectors. Now, I'm not going to disclose who's been negotiating with the governor, but why would, in the first lockdown, certain industries be locked down, and the second time around, they're not? We've got to think about this. This is an abusive relationship. This is not the way the Minnesota Constitution is written. We have three branches of power. We've got the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. Right now, Governor Walls is using his emergency powers to literally do an end run around the legislature, and he's able to do it without judiciary oversight. And that's why some of his executive orders have been flawed. That's why he had the ACLU coming against him when he decided to unilaterally send out addresses of homes with active COVID disease all over the state. You can't do that. That's a violation of privacy and HIPAA on multiple counts. But he's done other things as well. Do you remember when he said hydroxychloroquine can't be dispensed by the pharmacies? He never went to the physicians and said we couldn't prescribe it. He went around us. He said to the pharmacies, don't you, don't you, don't you dispense that medicine. And then four or five months later, when the big first surge is over, quietly he rescinds that portion of the executive order. This is an abusive relationship, and that's why Minnesotans are complaining. So when we see Minnesotans say, we're going to reopen, by damn George, we're going to reopen, it's not that they're trying to hurt anyone, snub anyone, or kill grandma. It is simply, they're seeing an abusive relationship, saying, you are not listening to us. We don't have a voice. You're telling us what we can do, who we can do with it, and whether or not we can make a living or pay our bills. That's an abusive relationship. Think about it.